Thank you for joining me on So What Today on Facebook or YouTube. Let me know where you are joining from in the comments below. Um, let's see. I have a lot to talk about today because it is our last So What of March 2022. And that means it's our last So What to celebrate National Quilting Month. So I have a couple of quilty things uh, to share with you today. One is a really great project that we posted on the Sulky blog, and it was designed by Sherry Goodry of Sh Cherry, excuse me, Cherry Goodry of Cherry Blossoms Quilting, and it's a really beautiful pillow project. I'll be taking you through those how-tos. We're also going to talk about creative decorative binding techniques for quilts and quilty projects. But before I get to those fun little details, um, I wanted to let you all know we have a very, very select few mystery boxes left. Our spring 2022 mystery boxes. Um, I believe there's about 19 of these left. So if you have not grabbed one yet, now is your chance uh, because when they're gone, they're gone. So 19 of these left inside, you will find 14 products, around 14. One of those is a freebie design that is included with your purchase. Um, it is our Bloom machine embroidery design, and you get that with your mystery box as a digital download, and you can embroider that out on your embroidery machine and create a beautiful wall hanging to celebrate spring. So that is thrown in with your mystery box contents. There are threads galore. Uh, you will find different thread types and weights um, in a variety of springy colors for lots of your spring makes that I'm sure you have on deck uh, as we start this new season. And there are stabilizers, notions, some really great tools. Um, I think you'll really enjoy the contents. I know some even received your mystery boxes already because we've been hearing some great feedback from all of you, which we really appreciate because we curate these boxes with you in mind. So we do want to hear that feedback. Um, there's some really great springy fabric included in your mystery box. So I think you will really, really enjoy this one. Um, and it just kind of gets your creative juices flowing. You know, you can open the box and kind of just either decide to make something with, with all of the contents um, or put all of these items to use in things that you already have planned. So I think you will love it. Suzanne says, good morning. I received my mystery box yesterday. It is great. So fantastic. Anne got her mystery box last week. So, oh, hey, Peggy. How's it going? Good to see you. Dawn says, I ordered, loved the mystery boxes. So I hope you all are getting yours before they sell out. Um, and there they go. They're telling me they start. Yep. There they go. <laughs> so hopefully you get one. Um, I have a knack for, you know, mentioning something and then all of a sudden it sells out. So get it while you can. Also, I wanted to know how many of you joined us for the Casey Duffel video cast in February. This was our video cast that we did in partnership with the American Sewing Guild. And if you are not part of the American Sewing Guild, um, now might be just the right time for you to join. It's a really, really great organization where you can connect with like-minded sewists, kind of like we do here on Sew What, um, only on a more um, localized level. So you will, once you join, you can join a chapter in your area. Um, some of them have monthly uh, meetings and get togethers. Um, some of them do guild events where you get to sew along with each other. Um, and there's an American Sewing Guild conference every year. This year it, it is in San Antonio, Texas. Um, at the end of June, I will be there teaching. So you can sign up and take a class from me hands on um, or come to one of my lectures. I'm really excited about it because I haven't been to American Sewing Guild Conference in a few years. Um, so I'm excited to get back at it and be able to connect with you all. Um, also, at the American Sewing Guild Conference, we will be unveiling the winner 
of our Casey Duffel photo contest. So if you were part of the Casey Duffel video cast, um, and if you weren't, you can still register and uh, watch the video cast and grab your pattern and or kit, and there are there is still time to make one. So all you have to do is upload a photo of your finished Casey Duffel bag to our contest site, and we will put that link in the chat here because I, I forgot to add it to the description of today's post. But all you have to do is fill out your entry form, upload a picture of your finished bag, and you are entered to win over $1,900 worth of prizes to outfit the sewing room of your dreams. So I will be unveiling the winner at American Sewing Guild Conference, and I will be uh, broadcasting a So What live from the show uh, to announce the winner. So it's really exciting, and I know uh, many of you have already entered because I recognize your names when I go in there to approve the entries, and it's been really, really fun to see your takes on the Casey Duffel bag, and there are some really beautiful bags that are just so expertly done, um, and if you don't even want to, or excuse me, if you don't want to enter, at least go on and vote for your favorite, and you can take a look at all of the bags that are on that page. Um, with the $1,900, or in the $1,900 um, prize package, is a bunch of sulky thread. You'll get some dream collections, some stabilizers. Um, that alone is uh, worth a ton of cash. Also included is this beautiful Brother sewing machine. Brother is uh, so kind and generous to provide this machine for the grand prize winner. And also, if you are outside of the United States, uh, we also have a prize package for international winners. Um, so there will be a grand prize winner announced that's U.S.-based that is eligible for this machine and all kinds of physical product goods. And then there is also a prize for uh, our international winner. So if you're outside of the U.S., uh, your votes will count as well. So Regardless of where you're from, please join us and upload your photo to the KC Photo uh, Contest or head on over there and vote for your favorite. All right. Speaking of video casts, we have another one on the horizon. This is our leggings video cast. It's called Favorite Leggings. And Meg Healy of Berta Style, she's a fantastic garment sewist, a really, really great teacher. Um, she did our summer sewing session DIY lounge wrap um, at sewingonline.sulky.com. This was one of our sewing sessions last summer where she took us all through how to draft and sew our own lounge wrap pattern. Very similar to kind of this wrap I am sporting today. Um, she also showed how to do machine embroidery embellishments on that lounge wrap. That is still available for purchase at sewingonline.sulky.com. But you can register today for our April uh, video cast, Favorite Leggings. So this one will be April 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern. And Meg will be on hand showing us all the sewing construction, drafting our own leggings pattern to fit, um, different customizations to make your perfect fit leggings, um, even machine embroidery. So please go and register for this video cast. You will not regret it. Leggings are going to be our go-to comfy, uh, you know, loungewear, as well as, you know, you can even go out in leggings with the right fabric. Am I right? So speaking of fabric, we've got two kits available. These leggings that Meg did are uh, featuring our fabric from the Galaxy kit. And these are fabrics from So So English Fabrics that we've included in the kits. And you will get a two yard cut. It's very wide fabric. It's about 54 inches wide, I want to say. And the two yards will make up to a size 22. 
thereabouts. Now, if you do a lot of um, testing or you want a wider leg or a uh, wider fold over waistband, let's say, you may need a little bit more fabric if you are over a size 22. And in that case, we also have one yard fabric bundles that you can add on to your purchase. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, but this is the Galaxy uh, version. And let's see here. This is the tie dye version. Um, it's almost more like an ice dyed type of fabric. Um, not, you know, your traditional kind of 60s tie dye, if you will. Um, but it's got beautiful lavender, blue, gray, silver, pink tones to it. Um, and it's a really, really nice buttery um, fabric weight. Uh, so you won't have that show through that sometimes you can get with lesser quality leggings or lesser quality fabric. So that's why we went with So So English um, double brushed poly spandex fabric for these kits. So someone just asked, is this for a sewing machine or a serger? And the great news is the video cast will cover both methods. So if you have a serger, you'll want to grab the serger kit because that will include four spools of thread for your four thread overlock um, stitch. And uh, it will also include the correct pack of needles for your serger. I know, did you know you need to change your sewing, your serger needles, just like your sewing machine needles? Um, I know many of us out there probably don't use our serger as much as we use our standard sewing machine. So we don't necessarily think about swapping out those needles. So we are including a brand new eco pack of organ needles with both the serger and the sewing machine kit so that you can start off with a brand new nice sharp needle um, and have great success with constructing your leggings. So if you are going to be working on a serger, be sure to select the serger kit. If you're going to be working on a sewing machine, be sure to select the sewing machine kit. With the sewing machine kit, you will get one spool of thread. It's a king spool, um, so it has a good amount of thread on there if you want to do um, a sewing machine kind of overlock stitch as well to kind of reinforce your seams. And Meg is going to go through all of that during the video cast. So you will either choose Galaxy or tie-dye for your kit. And then you will either choose serger or sewing machine for your kit. And the kits are already on sale in advance of the video cast. So you can grab one today, get it at the sale price, register for the video cast, and then join us on April 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. If you cannot join live, you can access the video cast at any time once the live event ends. So then it will become an on-demand video that you can stop, rewind, pause, all of those good things, and go through it at your leisure. With purchase of your video cast, which costs $5.99 to attend, you will get the uh, Favorite Leggings uh, Pattern Drafting Booklet, and that will give you all the instructions that you need to draft your pattern based on your favorite pair of leggings. So that's the other great thing about this. We are starting off with a pair of leggings that you already own and love. If you're anything like me, the ones that you own and love, you can't find anymore or they're super expensive. Think about, you know, those super spendy uh, leggings and activewear companies out there. Um, you know, I wear my favorite pair all the time and it's starting to get a little raggedy. So we are going to learn how to create a pattern using our favorite leggings and then how to construct it in two different ways, serger and sewing machine. So lots of things to cover. Also, as you can see by this image of Meg here, she has machine embroidery on the leg of these leggings. It's featuring sulky neon poly deco thread as well as sulky cry, the coated reflective yarn thread. So if you're out and about at dusk, maybe walking the dogs um, or going for a run, something like that, after you know the sun starts going down, that reflective thread is going to keep you a little bit safer out there um, at night. So these are really cool. Oh, tequila, $5.99. Yes, only $5.99, not $599. So 
<laughs> All right. If you don't know enough about your serger, join us for this great, great event. Now, April 1st begins National Serger Month. So it's a great time to break out your serger, get it serviced, dust it off, put some new needles in there because we will be bringing you a lot of serger information for the month of April, this video cast being one of them. Um, and if you are still unfamiliar with your serger or you want to kind of brush up on the basics, we have a really great serger sewing session at sewingonline.sulky.com. And you can take the serger session now because it's on demand, able to view and take at any time. Um, Katrina Walker is the instructor for that session, and it's very thorough. Um, it's a great interactive session um, that takes you through basic serger st uh, stitches to know, as well as decorative serger stitches. Um, and it's really great for understanding the anatomy of your serger, how the stitches are formed, um, how to make adjustments, um, that type of thing. So in advance of this video cast, you could take our serger sewing session um, and be really, really raring to go on April 19th. All right. Let's see. Here are the sewing machine kits. So that tie dye version and the galaxy version. So choose your favorite fabric or grab both kits. And you can see with the sewing machine kit, you get that one spool of poly deco thread for construction, as well as the proper needles that you need for each version. So with the sewing machine version, you'll get a pack of super stretch needles. Um, this fabric is super stretchy. So Meg is going to go through the needle and thread combo and why we chose that. Um, the poly deco thread is a 40 weight thread, so it's nice and strong for those seams. And if you happen to have a cover stitch function on your serger or uh, you have a cover stitch machine, Meg's also going to go through how those stitches are made and how to properly uh, do a cover stitch. So here is that serger kit. You can see it's virtually the same. You're just getting more thread so that you can thread all of your serger needles as well as the loopers and then a pack of those serger needles. So be sure to select the, the proper fabric that you desire as well as the type of kit. So serger or sewing machine. There will be two drop down menus when you are checking out um, and these are at a great, great price, by the way. I mean, it's just amazing. All right. Let me just make sure I don't, I've addressed all the questions about the video cast. Marcia says, looks like a great opportunity to spend some time with my new serger. There you go. I think you will all enjoy it. If you have not taken Meg's DIY lounge wrap sewing session, um, you'll really get a taste of her teaching style. She's um, super laid back, but enthusiastic at the same time. Um, she makes it seem so easy and effortless. Like, you know, we all can do this and we really, really can. So I hope you will join us for this really great event. Again, April 19th at 2 p.m. Mark your calendars. Um, and again, if you can't join live, still register. You will get that pattern drafting booklet. Um, Absolutely free. It's a $9.99 value for your $5.99. Um, and also we will be giving away two really great door prizes during the event. I mean, really great door prizes. So you have a chance to win um, some really great stuff as the video cast goes along. And for video casts, you do not have to be present to win those door prizes. So be sure to register, grab up your freebie, um, and mark your calendars. All right. Kelly's loving the galaxy fabric. I know. Um, ballpoint needles for the sewing machine. Yes. So those super stretch needles do have a ballpoint because when you're working with knit fabric, um, you want that ballpoint to um, push aside those knit fabrics or those knit fibers while the stitches are being formed rather than piercing through it. Um, if you have a sharp needle and you pierce through those fibers, you could get a hole in your fabric. It could snag. So that ballpoint needle is what's going to push those fabrics um, aside to create space for the thread to go. 
So yes, those super stretch needles are ballpoint. All right. So before we get to our awesome pillow tutorial, um, oh, Carol says, I just got here. How do I register? All right. So I put a link to register for the video cast in the description of today's post. So if you are not seeing the full description, click on the little see more button and the whole post will pop out and you'll see links to all the products I'm going to talk about today, as well as a link to register for the video cast, a link for the video cast kit. So you can grab that up because they are only going to be available while supplies last. Um, as you know, if you took our embroidery sewing session, um, which is still available and available to watch at any time on demand, um, we sold out of that kit the day that that sewing session went live. Um, so grab up a kit, make sure you get the color that you want. Um, it's going to be a great, great time. So that's how you register. Click on over. Um, if you have not joined us at sewingonline.sulky.com before, it will prompt you to create an account. This account is different from the account that you may have at sulky.com. So sulky.com is our website for purchasing all of your great products, including those kits. Sewingonline.sulky.com is a totally different website where we host all of our events all of our on-demand webcasts, video casts, etc. So you, too, you do need an account for both sites. If you want, you can use the same username and password for those sites to kind of try and avoid um, confusion when you're logging in. Um, but they are two different websites. So perfect. All right, Deb is all registered. Hey, <laughs> good to see you. I love seeing your name every so often. Deb joined me on our craft tours trip. Man, uh, how long ago was it? It feels like forever ago, yet it feels like yesterday. We did a craft tours trip uh, to Germany and we got to go to Sulky. Um, it, it, I was going to say Sulky headquarters, but that is not correct. We got to go see how Sulky thread is made and manufactured in Germany. And we went to Munich and we went to all these great places. We went to Austria. Um, we, you know, basically recreated the sound of music in our own way. Um, it was a great, great time. And uh, thank you, Deb. 2019. 2019 feels like forever ago. But anyways, we are all still great, great friends. Um, everybody that went on that trip. I see Deb all the time. I see uh, Peggy all the time. Um, and just... A lot of, we still have a group text going from 2019. Um, so it's a really great way to uh, meet new friends and to create lasting relationships. And we will be doing another craft tours in 2022. So this September, we will be traveling to Germany again, also going to Italy this time. We're going to go to a silk factory in Italy um, where you can go shopping. Um, and you know, Italy is where our cotton thread, um, comes from. So, uh, you know, we're going to be tying in all the great sulky education when we're on our bus rides. And, um, I will be doing two hands-on workshops during our craft tours event. So, um, you know, we can do some late night sew alongs together, and it's going to be a great, great time. You can learn more about that at crafttours.com. Search for the Sulky Tour. Um, and we do have a few spots still available for that. All right. Esther says, if you already live in Europe, what are the rules? Um, head to crafttours.com because I believe you can still join us. You just obviously won't need the airfare package. Uh, so reach out to them. They will have all of those details. All right. Let's see. Betsy says, are the leggings designed with a side seam or without? Well, the thing about these is we are copying our favorite pair. So if your favorite pair has a side seam, you will copy that side seam. If it does not, um, Meg is going to take you through all of the drafting instructions um, for your favorite pair. So you know, she's not even going to know what pair you're starting with, and she's still going to tell you how to copy it and how to construct them. So it's pretty amazing stuff. 
All right. Let's move on. I wanted to go over um, some decorative binding techniques before we get to our pillow project. Uh, because I thought, you know, binding is often, you know, if it's not, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the last step of creating a quilt. So we're either going to bind it using our own uh, binding that we've created, or you can use pre-made binding. Um, you can do all kinds of binding hacks. Um, let's see. Hold, hold on one moment. I am being alerted that the leggings kit is not showing the sale price, but yes, it should be on sale. So I wanted to be sure, um, I wanted to be sure we are, okay, they are on sale. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. Leggings kit on sale. Oh, Marianne says, give the site for Meg again. I cannot find it. So I linked directly to uh, sign up for the leggings video cast in the description of the post. So right under my video, you'll see a little description and click on see more and you'll find the links to register for the video cast to purchase your kit. And then all the links I'm about to talk about for the products for um, our pillow project today. Um, if you're not seeing that, you can go to sewingonline.sulky.com, go to education offerings, and it should be right up at the top. Um, and if you don't have an account yet there, you can uh, create an account simply by purchasing that video cast, and then you can add all sorts of things to your personal library. All right. And there we've added it into the chat. Um, so you can click right on over and register for that video cast. All right, back to bindings. So bindings, um, or creating our own binding or binding a quilt is the last step of creating our quilt. So I thought it would be great to discuss different ways to create decorative bindings, to add another special touch to the quilts that we're creating. Um, and it's something that we might not even think about because, you know, a lot of times, myself included, I get in this kind of autopilot um, situation where I am finishing a quilt. I've spent all this time on the quilt and all I have to do is bind it. So I just do the same thing every single time. So it occurred to me, how can we jazz up our bindings? Now, last week we made cute little coasters and I did some uh, straight line or matchstick quilting along the binding of the coasters. So I thought there are lots of different ways we can personalize our bindings, show that we really made this quilt ourselves, and put another little handmade stamp on it or signature, if you will, um, to, you know, the quilts that we create. So without further ado, we have a brand new quilt pattern up at sulky.com. This quilt pattern was designed by Carrie Jewell of Carrie Jewell Quilting. She's a fantastic artist and quilter. Check out her website because she has lots of quilt patterns that are just absolutely beautiful. She designed this quilt pattern for Sulky and it's brand new for purchase at sulky.com. It features all of these great orangey um, fabric prints from Art Gallery Fabrics. Um, and then this white background fabric, which is really a great, great canvas for all of that beautiful quilting. So uh, she did the quilting on this using the Sulky Blendables thread. Here's another image of the quilt so you can see it in all of its glory. Um, all of these crosses and the piecing and the quilting, it's just beautiful. Great, great quilt for summer. Um, summery festivities coming up. So here is the beautiful tangerine 30 weight blendables that Carrie used to quilt this. Um, and then what I absolutely love is you'll notice she had all of these two and a half inch strips that she used to piece um, the plus signs all over the quilt. Uh, so you could use a jelly roll um, or you could just cut your two and a half inch strips of fabrics that you have on hand that coordinate but she had a bunch left over. So she pieced them together to create 
this scrappy binding. So that's just another way to tie in all of those fabric prints that you're featuring on the quilt and put them all along the binding. I thought that was a really great finish. Um, and it uses up all of those great scraps that happen to be just the right width to create your own binding. So scrappy binding, we've got our um, matchstick quilted binding, and I have another binding idea for you. Oops, that's the pillow. Another binding idea for you. I thought this was so cute. How about adding some little pom-pom trim into your binding seam. I thought that was such a cute idea for a baby quilt um, or a little fidget quilt, if you will. Um, you know, a picnic blanket type quilt. It's just a cute little addition that kind of, you know, brings another something special to your quilt design. So I have a whole blog post on this. I just made a little sample, a little doll quilt. Um, to show this little technique, but this is all at the Sulky blog right now, blog.sulky.com. I talk about the scrappy binding, the matchstick binding, the pom-pom trim binding that I cannot get enough of. And speaking of baby quilts, another idea is to add some ribbon loops into that binding seam. Have you seen these little fidget blanket type things? You can add all the same width and color of, of ribbon um, or lots of different. So if you have a scrappy jar that has ribbon odds and ends in it, you can definitely add those into the binding seam and have a little bit of a fidget quilt, if you will. Um, my kids had a couple of these um, type, you know, loopy blankets when they uh, were when they were little and they absolutely loved them. So I thought that was another great addition when you're sewing on that binding, just insert a little ribbon loop, um, whether you're hand sewing it or machine sewing it. Um, and it's kind of an easy little way to just make it your own, put your own little stamp on it. Sharon says, Ellen, do you love pom-poms? <laughs> Sharon, do you know me? <laughs> I have put pom-pom trim on so many things. I don't know what my obsession with it is. I just think they're so cute, especially the little micro pom-pom trim. I mean, I just love it. I, I, sorry, I can't get enough. Who's with me? Who's with me out there? Tell me you also love pom-pom trim. <laughs> okay. Oh, tequila has registered and purchased both colors. All right. All right. I love it. Uh, Sharon says, I love making a scrappy binding. Looks so interesting on a quilt. I like to use different lengths of strips. Rose is asking, does she use the same thread in the bobbin? Yes. In this case, she used that 30 weight blendables in the bobbin as well. And that way you get that beautiful blendables thread on both sides of the quilt. And it's a great decorative accent, a way to bring in lots of color into your quilt without having to swap out your threads. So blendables is really my go-to quilting thread, the 30 weight blendables. You could use 12 weight if you like to hand quilt or do big stitch quilting or sashiko type quilting. Um, you could use the 12 weight, but you're going to need a little bit bigger needle to accommodate that 12 weight thread. For the 30 weight, I recommend a size 9014 needle. And then for the 12 weight, I would go even a little bit bigger, 116 needle. Um, you might be able to get away with the 9014, but since we're usually quilting at a higher speed, I would go up to that 100 needle um, for best results. All right, thank you, Carol. Cute pom-poms. <laughs> All right, loving the scrappy bindings. That's great. Orange is my favorite color. Same. I had my bridesmaids wearing orange um, at my wedding. I hope they didn't hate me for it forever. Um, but it was a beautiful pumpkin color and I loved it. Anyways, all right, let's get to our pillow for today. I think you all are going to absolutely love this. This is our quilty pillow 
and it features machine embroidery in those squares. So those flowers are from our pollen machine embroidery collection, which used to only be available as part of our pollen slimline thread assortment. But now you can purchase these pollen designs individually or as a collection at sulky.com. So you can grab up these designs. They are a great large scale floral collection. Um, featured on this pillow is the Gerbera Daisy, the Poppy, and the Cosmo. And there are three more flower designs also in the collection. There's a hibiscus, a dandelion, um, and a, I forget right now, what is the last flower? At any rate, they are beautiful. They feature sulky 40 weight rayon thread and sulky 12 weight filane threads. So all of the little bits of pollen, if you will, are sewn in the 12 weight filane, which is our acrylic thread that blooms when you brush it with our filane wire brush. So the center of those flowers get brushed with our brush and then that part of the flower kind of blooms out, mimicking the pollen that just might be floating through the air in your neck of the woods right now. Um, for us here in Colorado, not so much because snow is on the horizon. I know, again. Um, you know, incidentally, <laughs> tomorrow is my birthday. I know, hold on, tomorrow is my birthday. <laughs> and, uh, I think it has snowed on my birthday every year I've lived in Colorado, except for like one year. Um, so it it's only fitting that snow is on the horizon for tomorrow. Um, yesterday it was 80 degrees. Tomorrow, snow. Anyway, I digress. You may be having pollen uh, floating around in your neck of the woods right now, but if you don't, or if you would rather see it in thread, uh, you can create this really cool floral pollen effect using specialty thread. So let's go through it. First off, we're going to do our embroidery. Oh, I also wanted to mention that these are Sherry, Cherry Goudry's fabrics, and she featured all of her own fabric designs on uh, this pillow itself. You can get the links to her collection uh, right on the Sulky blog, which is where the full instructions for this live. So there's no need to write any of this down. You can head on over to the blog after our video is done for the day and you can get all the instructions, fabric requirements, etc., supply list, all of that good stuff over there on the blog. But I did want to showcase uh, her really great fabric prints and how she combined them all together for this great design. All right. You can see you don't need a lot, a lot of fabric for this pillow, but it is a good size kind of couch pillow, you know, or maybe on your front porch or if you have a sunroom, something like that. Really beautiful um, uh, springy slash summery project. So first and foremost, we're going to do our embroidery. Oops, I have the wrong photo coming first. Here we go. So we are going to use Sulky Stiffy Stabilizer for this. It is a heavier weight tearaway stabilizer and Cherry recommends using two sheets of it um, behind the fabric to support uh, that heavier weight thread and the density of these designs. There's a lot, a lot of thread in these designs. So we've got two layers of stiffy, our layer of fabric, and you're going to hoop it on up. Make sure you pay attention to the color sequence chart PDF that comes with your design downloads and choose the correct hoop uh, for the design that you've chosen. Like I said, these are relatively large scale designs. Um, a couple of them fit in a four by four hoop, a couple of them fit in a five by seven hoop. So there's a range of sizes included in the collection. So after hooping, of course, you're going to embroider the design. So another thing to note, when we are using two different thread weights within an embroidery design, we have to swap our needle size when we swap our thread weights. So the majority of this particular design, uh, this Gerbera Daisy design, is in the 40 weight rayon. So for 40 weight, we're going to use an 8012 top stitch needle. 
the top stitch needle is going to allow us uh, to, it, it gives us a nice sharp point to go through all of these layers of stabilizer um, and create a nice balanced stitch. Now in the bobbin, we're gonna be using 60 weight bobbin thread or 60 weight poly light thread. Either one of those is going to work, but we need that lighter weight thread to kind of uh, help. Let's see, how do I describe this? When you have a balanced stitch in machine embroidery, it means that on the wrong side, you sort of see a hint of the upper thread along the back side. Whereas when you're doing regular sewing, you kind of don't want to see the top thread on the back and you don't want to see the back thread on the top. That's how you know you have a balanced stitch. But in machine embroidery, we want to see a little bit of that top thread on the back side or wrong side of the fabric. So that 60 weight thread is going to help us achieve that. Now you may need to mess with your tension ever so slightly when you're working with that heavier weight thread until you see a little bit of that 12 weight thread on the back side of your project. So if you've never worked with the 12 weight filet thread before with machine embroidery, I'm gonna go through some tips with you. Um, it is a little bit more of a challenging thread, so you do need to, you know, take this advice to heart. It's not really advice, it's really more how to work with the thread. Um, I, I don't wanna use the word rules because I believe there should be no rules in sewing. We are being creative. Um, and all those good things, but we do need to take these things into account to make sure that this heavyweight thread is going to perform for us. Now, like I said, the majority of this is sewn in the 40 weight rayon. Just that center of the flower is done in the filet. So when you get to those color stops, you are going to be loading your new needle, which is going to be a 116, 100 slash 16 titanium top stitch needle. The reason I go to a titanium needle is because it's a lot, lot stronger than a standard needle and you're going to have less breakage or no breakage at all really um, when your needle tries to penetrate through all of those heavyweight thread layers. Now this was digitized for that heavier weight thread so you will notice that the stitches are longer uh, when it is doing those fill stitches for the center of the flower those stitches will be longer um, and they're kind of stacked in a different way so that when your design is complete and you go to brush it out, um, they're not right on top of each other. They're kind of staggered, the stitches in rows, um, so that when you brush it out, um, it has a full blooming effect. So you will notice some differences with the way that this sews out once you get to that flower center. So you're gonna swap your needle, you're gonna thread it with the filet, still having that 60 weight thread in the bobbin, you're gonna slow your machine down as low as it can go. And I know you're gonna stare at your machine and wonder when will it ever end? But it is well worth it to just take the extra time and slow your machine way down. If you think about it, it is sewing this very heavyweight thread that also has texture to it. It has like fuzzies coming off of it on purpose. That is the way it is manufactured so that you have this really textured 3D effect look, okay? So uh, we're gonna slow our machine down. We're gonna be patient. <laughs> we're gonna breathe. We're gonna, you know, have an M&M or something like that. And uh, we are also going to turn off our auto jump stitch feature on our machine. Now, it might be called something else with your particular machine brand, but most embroidery machines, when you begin a design, it will bring that top thread down to the wrong side and almost knot it up a little bit or, or um, you know, secure that thread on the back side. And then that little thread tail, um, a lot of the times in regular or 40 weight machine embroidery, that thread tail just kind of gets sewn over and it kind of secures the rest of your design. We don't worry about it, right? That 40 weight thread isn't going to, you know, create a bump on the right side, nothing like that. However, the 12 weight thread, if it gets pulled to the wrong side and creates a little knot or tie off stitch 
and then that little thread tail is on the wrong side of your design, that is even more density that your machine needle has to penetrate to create a beautiful balanced stitch and a nice design when you are done. So we want to turn off that function and instead we're going to start the design. It's going to go for a couple of stitches and then we're going to manually stop it so that we can trim that thread from the right side of the work. And don't worry about, you know, any thread coming undone because there are lots of uh, stitches in that area and it's going to go over uh, that beginning stitch for you and you won't have any worries about needing a tie off stitch, etc. So I hope that makes sense. Um, consult your manual if you don't know how to turn that function off. For me, before I start a design, a menu comes up on my screen and it asks me, do I want to baste around the design? Do I want to baste around the hoop? Um, do I want to start in the middle of the design or somewhere else? There's a lot of functions that I can tick on or off for that particular design. And one of them is that auto uh, thread cutting function. Okay, so again, it might be called something different for your machine, um, but every time we swap out a filane color, um, it's not going to tie it off on the wrong side. But that also means for the rayon colors, that functionality will also be turned off. So just be aware of that, that you're going to need to stop your machine um, and kind of trim that beginning thread tail so that it doesn't get caught in a different portion of your design since it's not being pulled to the wrong side. All right, everyone with me? Hopefully that makes sense. Be sure to take all of these precautions when you are sewing with this thread because I want you to have great success with it and have a beautiful ending result. All righty. So we've hooped, we've embroidered the design. When your embroidery is complete, you will have your three designs that you chose. So you're going to trim these up according to the pattern guide sheet. You can give it a little bit of a press just to remove any hoop markings that you might still have on your fabric and then trim up uh, your fabric rectangles according to uh, the directions in the blog post. All right, then it is a matter of assembling our pillow top or our quilty top. So we're gonna add these sashing borders to each one of our floral embroidered squares or rectangles rather. And then we will have a cute little border surrounding each one of those embroidered pieces. And then we're going to assemble the rest of the top. So I know this looks a little bit intimidating, but like I said, it is all explained in the blog post along with all the dimensions of all of these pieces. So you can see there's more borders, there's more sashing, um, and this is how we're gonna create that beautiful pillow top. All right. Once we have that, it's going to look like this. And we are going to layer this with some batting um, and a piece of backing fabric so that we can quilt the whole pillow top. Now the quilting is totally up to you. Uh, Cherry quilted just the white fabric around each one of the designs, but you could add as much quilting as you like. Um, I believe she also quilted in the ditch for those, those border pieces as well to kind of make them pop a little bit. You don't need a ton, a ton of quilting because this is a smaller project, it's a pillow. Um, however, you can add as much or as little as you like. And I'm gonna show you a close-up photo of her quilting that she did on each one of those white blocks um, so that you can see um, she did a heavy, heavy amount of quilting using our 50 weight cotton thread. Um, so it kind of blends into that white fabric because of that 50 weight, um, lighter weight uh, quilting thread. Um, but just a great, great end result. And because she heavily quilted those blocks around the designs, the designs almost have like a trapunto effect. They almost kind of pop up away from the block because it's so heavily quilted. Uh, so I thought that was just a great, great choice. You could do free motion there. Um, you could do echo quilting around or, you know, beyond each one of those designs um, in a really narrow border. Um, 
just all kinds of options, however you, you would like to quilt the finished piece. All right, so this is a digital rendering, so it's a little difficult to see that her quilting is done here. Um, and then she's got an additional stitch just inside of that sort of outer border piece. And that kind of gives it the look of having like a pillow flange, if you will. Then we're going to create the quilt back. And this just has a simple envelope closure so that you can insert a pillow form. And it's a rectangular form. Um, I'm not positive of the dimensions of it, but again, that's all in the blog post. So we're going to create an envelope backing. Super simple, my favorite way to create a pillow because you don't need to mess with a zipper. Um, we don't have to hand sew any opening shut. It's easy to take on and off to uh, wash it if you need to. So we're going to start with um, basically a fabric square and we're gonna hem one edge of it. That's gonna be one opening for the envelope pillow. And then you're going to do the same thing with a little bit larger rectangle. Then you are going to layer those so that the backs are right sides facing the front of your quilted piece. And we are simply going to stitch the perimeter of the pillow. And then we will have our opening that has two nice little hemmed edges that overlap. Um, and it's a beautiful finish for the pillow. So there you can see, you stitch around the perimeter and there's your envelope opening and your pillow is complete. So here is that uh, close up photo I wanted to show you, not only of the quilting, let me zoom in a little bit more, not only of the heavy amount of quilting that she did, but also those yellow and orange threads, those are the filleting threads of this design. The rest of it is in sulky rayon. And you can see there's a quite a bit of thread um, in the design so that you get that shading and the dimension of the really pretty embroidery. Let me see how close up I can get the filleting. They almost look like little French knots created by that thread. Now, also, as you can see, Cherry did not brush these out. She liked the look of the filleting just as is. And doesn't it create this amazing looking texture for these designs? But if you were to brush those out with our filleting wire brush, which looks like this, here is the filleting wire brush. It is specially made for this thread, um, but if you have a different brush you want to use, you can. The wire bristles really help get in there and fluff out those thread fibers. I have also tried using a very hard toothbrush and honestly, it doesn't work as good. Um, but if you want just kind of a subtle fuzz on your filleting thread, a heavier weight toothbrush would probably work. But if you really want it to bloom um, and almost like, you know, if you were using it for Santa's beard or something like that, um, if you really wanted it to bloom, like um, we did a fox, we have a, a free filleting fox design at sulky.com um, that you can practice your filleting stitch outs with if you would like. Um, and for something like an animal, a fox, a lion, a cat, um, you really want those fibers to really come out and be dimensional. So I find that this wire brush um, is really pretty necessary for achieving that effect. Um, so that's really kind of up to you how much you want to brush it how much bloom you want. Um, it's very appropriate to say bloom when we're talking about these flowers. Uh, so it's your choice whether you want to brush it out or not. Um, it has a cool effect either way. Uh, so I think you guys will really enjoy working with this. If you grabbed up our Peekaboo Pets collection, that's a machine embroidery collection with six pets, three cats and three dog designs that is all digitized for filleting with a little bit of rayon mixed in as well for those details like the dog's eyes and things like that. Um, you wouldn't want to brush those out. So those are in the 48 rayon and then all the fur for the animals is done in the filleting. They do take a while to stitch out because they have a lot, a lot of stitches and you have to, have to, have to put your machine on the lowest speed possible when you're sewing out those designs. 
All right. Betsy says the crazy cat embroidery design fluffs up real cute with the filet thread. All right. Oh, great question from Diane. She says the brush doesn't harm the other thread in the design. So it doesn't actually. Um, I find, well, uh, with the designs that we digitize for the filet thread, um, the 40 weight is also very dense. So it's quite close to the fabric surface, if you will, whereas the filet is kind of a little bit higher up you are able to avoid most of the other stitches with that wire brush. And I've actually never had a problem with the other threads coming out um, or getting snagged by uh, that brush. But you know, you do wanna be careful when using it. The other thing to note is with your background fabric. Now with this pillow project, we're using quilting cottons. Um, they aren't going to be marred or harmed by that wire brush. However, I did do a couple of samples using those Peekaboo Pets designs on some beautiful felt fabric. And if your wire brush catches that felt along the outside of your design, the felt is going to get brushed as well. So keep that in mind. Um, with our Foxy Filet design, uh, that freebie I was talking about at sulky.com, we had Katrina Walker do a sample of these really beautiful pillows. Um, and I think it was a fleece fabric that she used, which is a really great combination with the filet because, you know, you're getting the texture from the fleece, the texture from the thread, and it all goes together quite nicely. Well, what she did was, you know, when you're embroidering fleece, you need to use a topper so that your thread floats above the fabric surface, uh, you know, and shows up and doesn't get, you know, doesn't sink down into those fleece fibers. Um, so she used Sulky Salvi as the topper and actually brushed out the filet fox before removing the topper. That way the topper was totally protecting the surrounding fabric and there was no way that she was gonna snag that fleece when she was brushing out the fox. So you could also do that if you are embroidering on felt, even though a topper isn't entirely necessary, you could use the Sulky Salvi and just tear it away um, when your embroidery is complete and after you have brushed it, and that would protect your surrounding fabric. If you have any worries about uh, your quilt or your pillow fabric, um, you could also keep that, you could also use a topper. There's no harm in using it. Um, and just remove it after you've brushed out the design. So another great tip um, that Katrina gave us when she did that tutorial. All right, I wanna make sure that we don't have, okay, Sue says, I like the envelope opening because you can store your pillow top flat and use the form for another pillow top to change pillows seasonally. Yes, great, great idea. Jana says, will these designs work with regular sulky thread or is it digitized specifically for filet? So these pollen designs have a lot of 40 weight rayon in them, in the digitizing. And then just those pollen areas are digitized for the heavier weight thread. Now, if you wanted to, um, you could maybe go down to like a 30 weight cotton for those portions of the design. Um, but just know that your stitches might be a little farther apart maybe than than desired, you know, for those French knot looking stitches, the little dots um, and things like that, but they are pretty dense. So I would think going down to a 30 weight cotton would work. You could try the 12 weight cotton as well since it's digitized for 12 weight. Um, so those are some options. Be sure to uh, change your needle size when you get to those portions of the design though. Um, if you did decide to do the whole flower using 40 weight thread alone, um, that is considerably lighter weight than a 12 weight thread. So your those portions aren't going to be as dense um, and might not fill that space um, adequately. So I hope that answers your question. You could always test it out and see if you are okay with that finished look. Um, or go to a 30 weight cotton or even 12 weight cotton um, if you were um, 
not using the filleting. Okay. Connie's asking how much overlap for the back closure. Um, I don't have the specific dimensions. They are all in the blog post though. So if you go to blog.sulky.com, you will find uh, that pollen uh, textured quilted pillow project and you'll get all the dimensions. Um, but typically I would at least go with a two inch overlap um, and then be sure to account for your hem allowances that you're adding um, to overlap. And that way you don't, it doesn't pop open um, when in use, you know, after you have stuffed it with your pillow form. I would think at least two inches, um, but I've gone even wider than that um, in, in pillow projects as well. So yeah, you just wanna make sure you have that coverage and then it doesn't pop open after you have stuffed it. All right, lots of people loving those flower designs. So I would love to see your take on the flower designs if you use them for something else. Um, we have shown them in zipper pouches and all kinds of things um, since uh, developing the pollen thread assortment. So I would love to see your creations. And you can also be sure to join our special Sulky Facebook group, which is called Sulky Stitch and Post where we encourage you to post pictures of your sulky projects. We love, love, love seeing what you've created. And it's a buzz with lots of activity. I'm in there all the time commenting and, and sharing pictures as well, even of things that my kids have made uh, using sulky thread and stabilizers. So be sure to join that group because we're going to be giving those folks some special offers and some great opportunities uh, to join events and things like that in advance. Um, of their release dates. And so all kinds of benefits for joining our special Facebook group. Uh, you can search for it on Facebook, Sulky Stitch N Post, like Stitch and Stick, Stitch and Post. All right. And I know a lot of you, um, your names are so familiar to me. So I know a lot of you are already over there, but go ahead and join that group if you haven't already. Um, and you can continue this conversation. All right. Thank you, Diane. She is saying, I like three inches on the back of the pillow. So that's good. Um, yeah. And if it keeps popping open, use some Velcro. Great solution. <laughs> All right. Let's see. <laughs> Deb, you're so funny. My machine only has three speeds, ludicrous, frantic, and I can't believe they call this slow. <laughs> Well, that's a shame. I wonder if you could manually control the speed. Sometimes even with machine embroidery, you can use your foot pedal, even though that's a little bit tedious, especially with something that has a lot, a lot of stitches. But I wonder if you could do that if you really needed to go slow. Um, just a solution. I don't know if it's going to work out, um, but we'll see. Let me know. All right. So what's the guild name? American Sewing Guild. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up again. American Sewing Guild is who we partnered with for our KC video cast and uh, American Sewing Guild Conference in San Antonio this summer. It's right on the San Antonio Riverwalk. There's classes every day. Um, there's usually a fun gala, a fashion show. I haven't gotten the full itinerary for this year's conference, um, but it's a really, really great time. And if you are a part of the American Sewing Guild, they hook you up with your local guild so you can join in their monthly um, kind of gatherings or whatever they may do. Each guild kind of does their own thing. Uh, there's a guild president um, and it's it's all kinds of fun and great education. And, and we love partnering with the American Sewing Guild. So um, check them out. I believe it's ASG.org or you can just search American Sewing Guild. All right. Lori is loving the flowers as well. So be sure to grab up your pollen machine embroidery collection. Like I said, that is available as individual designs for purchase or all six designs you can grab as a collection or you can grab up our pollen slimline, which is an assortment of threads, all the threads you need for all of um, the floral designs, including small snap spools of those filleting threads that are featured in those flowers. So. Um, right now, we only have those large cones of filleting thread. So in that slimline, you'll get smaller spools uh, because, you know, the filleting portions of these designs, 
You don't need a lot, a lot of Filet thread. You will need a lot of rayon thread though as well. So we have included all the colors in that slimline and with purchase of the slimline, you get all of those embroidery designs for free. So um, included with your purchase. All right, I think we've covered everything. Do we still have mystery boxes left? Someone let me know. I know they're going fast. If we have any left, I'm sure it's slim pickings. So I hope you got yours today while watching So What. Grab up your mystery box. Grab up your leggings kit. Be sure to join us on April 19th for favorite leggings video cast at sewingonline.sulky.com. I look forward to hosting Meg and I look forward to um, having you all take this great class from her. She's a fantastic teacher, a really great friend of mine. Uh, I think you will all enjoy it. Elaine wants to know, will, will there be more designs created using Filane thread? Yes, I hope so. Uh, so right now, like I mentioned, we have the Peekaboo Pets collection. We have the Pollen collection. We have our Foxy Filane design. Uh, so, you know, our designs are always in the works. And um, if you want to see more of those, thank you for letting us know. And, you know, we are always developing designs and want you to get the most out of your thread. It's so fantastic. It's really great for quilting as well. I did an entire, it's called Vintage Picnic Quilt. Um, and I did an entire quilt using the Filet thread for the quilting. And it gave it this kind of vintage looking quality. Um, and it just performed beautifully in the long arm machine. So lots of uses for that uh, thread, not just for machine embroidery. Handwork, quilting, decorative top stitching, sashiko work. Um, so it can be used for a variety of things. So thank you all for joining me today. I hope you're all inspired to go make your own pollinated pillow by Cherry Goudry and uh, do some creative quilt bindings. Head on over to blog.sulky.com to get all the information on the decorative quilt bindings as well as the full tutorial for the pollinated pillow. And then head on over to sewingonline.sulky.com and register for our great leggings video cast and perhaps brush up on your serger skills in our serger sewing session. All right. I look forward to seeing you in April next week uh, where we talk more serger, um, bring your serger questions, and uh, we will gather again. All right. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.